this was their bottom line like i'm not breastfeeding because i can't drink let them know no 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 you can there's ways Welcome back to my channel. My name is Queen Sidem, founder of A Mama's Guide on Instagram. And today's video is going to be about breastfeeding while drinking. Yes, I just said that. I just said that. I've been kind of putting off this video because I know there's a lot of like controversy around this but fact of the matter is times have changed and there's been so much research built around breastfeeding we're still learning about it millennial moms like our generation we're so different from the past generations in terms of waiting to have children working longer hours owning more businesses and this is because we're a product of our parents generation so they raised us to be this strong determined women hard-working women I must say and with that being said a lot of millennial women not all but a lot of millennial women are falling back or straying away from breastfeeding so there's been so many studies done to try to find ways to help the process of breastfeeding and the transition into being a carefree person to a new found mom so basically the medical world wants to convince us to go back to breastfeeding exclusively breastfeeding um this starts like from when you're in the hospital when you deliver your baby most likely you're going to meet with a lactation consultant while you're in the room upstairs recovering and they're going to tell you how important breastfeeding is even when you go to your normal doctor visits they're going to push you to breastfeed a lot of lactation consultants right now they let moms know right up front like oh by the way if you do want a glass of wine that's okay or if you do want to go out for drinks just know that you can still breastfeed like way back then or if your family is from the caribbean or any other countries breastfeeding is normal breastfeeding is expected it's looked down upon if you don't breastfeed like it's so important and people breastfeed until their baby's like two years old sometimes but in america it's kind of like taboo like they don't like you breastfeeding in public they don't like you doing this why are you breastfeeding so long there's so many distractions and ideas around this natural thing that a lot of moms are just like you know what i'm gonna pass on that and it's okay as long as your baby is fed that's fine I've done both, so I'm not going to give you any biased opinions. It's going to be pretty neutral. I'm going to try to be as neutral as I can. Um, I've, I've done formula feeding. I've done breastfeeding. So I'm just going to be Switzerland at this point. But if you are a new mom and one of the reasons you're leaning towards not breastfeeding is because you want to go back to having fun. You've been pregnant for almost nine months or maybe longer than nine months and you're just like, I haven't drank, haven't gone out with friends friends i feel left out like these feelings are so normal and it's hard to talk about sometimes because people are like you're a mom you know this is what you gotta do and they don't really sympathize with moms who do enjoy going out who do enjoy having drinks and having fun i'm just here to tell you that it's okay it's okay to to miss these things and to, i had the pleasure the luxury of having a lactation consultant for almost two months i was meeting with them like five days a week almost and they were really schooling me and i want to share it with you guys because it has helped me so much and it's made me eager to breastfeed when you're pregnant and you're not drinking and you're not going out you you might still be going out but you're not where you were before it kind of gets a little disappointing this is not disrespecting our child. We're happy. I'm, I was extremely happy. I'm still happy that I have my baby boy. But I had my little mocktail drinks and it was cool and it was fun. But after you, after you deliver your baby, people tell you like, oh, you still can't drink, right? Because you're breastfeeding. So you're about to go a whole, what, a year not drinking again? No, boo. And this doesn't mean you're a lush. I'm not a lush. If I go out, like before I was even pregnant, I'm babysitting my drinks one drink the whole night same drink ice melted it's water same drink so once you even mention drinking while you have a baby it's like oh my god you're you're so selfish all you care about is liquor no i'm here as a fellow millennial mama to tell you times have changed and they've done so many studies around consuming alcohol while breastfeeding in a safe way this is going to be safe so 
Of course, nothing is 100% accurate, but from my several consultations with lactation consultants, and I researched a bit just so I'm prepared for you guys, so I'm gonna tell you some ways that you can still drink while breastfeeding. And please, please pass this video on to any new expectant mothers because just like the medical world, I kind of do want to push for more breastfeeding moms. Of course, formula tries its best to mimic breastfeeding, but you know, nothing is going to be as great as the original. And it's completely okay to do formula feeding. I just have to be honest with you and tell you that formula is trying to catch up to breast milk and all its qualities it's also beneficial to the mom okay this is going to sound crazy crazy bear with me this is real data that I'm about to give you so we already know that it's great it's perfect and it's what's best for babies but it's so many benefits that come with breastfeeding for mothers like for you like this is going to help you um it's widely known that breastfeeding helps with weight loss after having the baby breastfeeding also reduces the chance of postpartum depression and it reduces stress if you you know when you were pregnant with the hormones going crazy the stress was for most of us it was a lot like total imbalance in our hormones so we were not able to handle situations that we used to handle we weren't able to handle it so daintily and perfect you know i don't know if daintily is a word but but when you breastfeed it triggers oxytocin and this is like that hormone that's like oh i'm in love this is the best feeling it's like a utopian kind of hormone like your honeymoon stage so Breastfeeding moms also had lower numbers of ovarian cancer and I'm talking these percentages that I'm giving you guys like these stats There's a crazy big difference when you when they looked at non breastfeeding mothers and breastfeeding mothers So this is not it was only a 2% difference. No, this is Big okay because breastfeeding is what our bodies were naturally meant to do and it's okay if you don't do it now Breastfeeding moms are less likely to have ovarian cancer uterine cancer and even breast cancer So when they did a study of the breastfeeding moms and the non breastfeeding moms the breastfeeding moms numbers were much lower Than the non breastfeeding moms. So after you have a baby if you watched my postpartum video the TMI video about what really happens after birth you have a lot of bleeding you have a lot of um after pains this is okay you know you can still push through if you do decide to do formula but if you do decide to breastfeed this reduces the bleeding it goes into your journey of motherhood like you won't get your period just like you didn't when you were pregnant if you're breastfeeding you most likely won't still won't get your period so let's say you breastfeed for eight months you're not having a period for almost a year so let's get right down to it that was a long-winded intro I don't know. I'm sorry guys. I just really wanted to let you guys know as much as I know. The safest option for moms is to not drink at all when you're breastfeeding. This is going to be the best option for your baby just to not drink. And now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about drinking while you're breastfeeding. So alcohol can be found in breast milk. But if you have maybe one glass of wine, and I'm not talking about a double shot margarita. I'm talking about a glass of wine you know a standard drink so if you a heavy drinker these measurements are going to be different for you let's think of a glass of wine so when alcohol is consumed it's detected in your bloodstream in your bloodstream you know how they talk about the blood alcohol level when you're driving and all that stuff just like that alcohol is in your breast milk and 30 minutes after you finish your drink that's when it's at its highest um, that's when it's most dangerous for your baby to consume your breast milk so some people wait 30 minutes and then feed the baby. No, boo, it's at its highest 30 minutes after you drink. So like on the CDC and other breastfeeding health websites, standard rule of thumb is just to wait two to three hours after your drink to breastfeed your baby. But again, I'm gonna let you know, this is in regards to standard drinks, not the heavy drinks, not shots, okay? You have to consider your weight, the type of drink you have, like how much alcohol is it, how much proof, did you drink on an empty stomach, did you have a full meal, all of these factor into the alcohol levels in your breast milk. Grab a pen and paper because this is going to be a lot and if you really want to try breastfeeding while still having fun, just take the notes, put in the work. I'm making I'm trying to make this as easy and gentle as possible for you guys because I want you to breastfeed and I want you to still enjoy things that you couldn't while you were pregnant. I'm telling you how long the alcohol stays in your breast milk and how long you should wait, but there's ways to avoid 
any risk of your child having alcohol in their system and I'm gonna get to that later like there's little t alcohol level tests you can do there's different ways to store your milk to prepare for days that you're gonna drink we're gonna get to that later but I really want to dive into the basics so let's talk about how alcohol can affect your baby if you breastfed you waited and there's a possibility that they might have consumed alcohol because you don't know like maybe you had strong drinks and you know let's just talk about what could happen worst case scenario not trying to scare you but these are things that can happen like your milk supply can decrease if you're drinking often and your letdown reflex when your milk is coming up for the baby so it might be harder for them to get a letdown and your milk supply might just keep decreasing if you're drinking every day or every week. This can also affect your baby's sleeping. A lot of people joke and say give the baby a little bit of wine, put them to sleep. But your baby is an infant right now. They're learning how to sleep. They're learning how to swallow milk. They're, they're in the earliest stages of life. Things are very, very much different for them as it is for an adult. So even though wine puts us to sleep, excessive drinking while breastfeeding can cause your babies to stay up and not sleep because their brain is going haywire, like their whole body is changing. This is an outside substance being poured into them. So you do want to be mindful of the possibilities that can happen from not doing this the right way and also negatively impact their development. This might be cognitive, like with their learning and their minds and their thoughts, and it could also be physical, like their motor skills, and eventually with a combination of both of those, it can affect their social skills, how they behave in school, how they behave with friends. Now that I told you um, the basics and I got some disclaimers out the way, I'm gonna tell you the tips and tricks, boo. Cause you could do this. I know it was a little scary when you was listening before, but we could, I got you. Earlier I mentioned that a lot of health professionals recommend you waiting two to three hours after drinking to breastfeed. So what is your baby going to eat in this time? The ba babies are eating like hour and every hour and a half when they're newborn or every two hours if you're lucky. But most babies cluster feed and they're eating back to back to back. So if you've been like, if you fell into the pregnancy YouTube rabbit hole on on the internet you might see a lot of videos about milk supply and increasing your milk supply and storing milk and building a freezer stash and you're probably thinking like why are these people doing this I don't need to do that I'm gonna just have the milk ready in my breast every day. no these videos are gonna come in handy in those two to three hours that you're not feeding your baby because you're waiting for the alcohol to leave your breast milk You're not gonna let your baby starve, so what you're gonna do is take out the milk that you stored. These are some storage bottles I have. These are the Medela ones. And then there's, they also have some ones that come in Ziploc bags so it can fit in your fridge and lay flat. Or if you have a lot of storage room in your fridge, you can just get a whole bottle. And they come with labels and stickers so you can know how many ounces are in that bottle, the date you had it so you know when it expires. I don't wanna overwhelm you guys with that, but just know that if you start building a milk stash you can drink and if your baby's really really hungry before your two to three hours is up you can take milk out your milk stash put it in a bottle and feed that fresh alcohol free milk to your healthy baby boy or girl so what you want to do is always pump when you know you're going out for drinks make sure you have enough bottles and one extra because you never know what happens what if it spills god forbid you know something can happen so you want to have milk ready and available for your baby this is going to avoid any fussiness you know you won't need to run out and get formula because your baby's really hungry and you didn't expect them to be hungry no have a little stash in the fridge of milk just in case your baby just wants to eat and you just had a drink watch those videos I'm gonna do some too, but watch those videos on how to build a freezer stash. I also mentioned earlier that your weight, how much you ate that day, all of that factors into the level of alcohol that's going to be found in your breast milk. So some people would just have to wait two hours after one standard drink and the breast, the alcohol will be gone. But if you're like me and you're not the standard weight, like I was in the 90s when I had my baby because I was just, I was dropping, dropping, dropping away from a whole bunch of complications. There's a little chart online. 
I'll pop it up in here somewhere. Screenshot that, okay? Make sure you're taking notes in your phone. So like if you're 90 pounds and you have one standard drink, like a glass of wine, you're gonna have to wait about two hours and 50 minutes for it to leave your system. Even if you ate, girl, you gotta wait because you weigh less and the alcohol is likely to stay in your system longer. If you're like the standard weight of 120, or like 115, two hours and a half, you're good to go. And this is for one drink. Some websites say that you can wait one hour and a half, but keep in mind that this rubric just goes for a standard drink. So if you're having like a strong drink with like a double shot or something, or if you're just taking a shot, it's gonna be very different. You're gonna have to wait longer. That's why I say to have milk ready and extra, just in case, you know, you're still feeling a little buzz. So now, you have, so now you have two tips, right? The first tip is to wait after you drink and make sure you factor in your body weight. The second tip was to have a milk stash ready in case of emergency and have a little extra just in case you had a crazy night. Maybe you left the milk somewhere and now you've home without the milk and you're like, oh my gosh, always have extra. Have some in your fridge, have some in your baby bag, in a little freezer bag or something. This is a common phrase, pump and dump. There's a lot of like controversy around this idea of pumping and dumping. The CDC says it's useless basically, um, but a lot of moms do it. I did it just out of fear and I just wanted to be sure that my baby wasn't getting any alcohol. But the way alcohol is in your blood is the way it's in your breast milk. You're still going to be drunk until it leaves your bloodstream. So you're still going to have alcohol in you until it leaves your breast milk. So only thing that really gets rid of it is time. So they say like just pumping out that milk is wasting that milk because if you keep it in you and you wait the allotted time, that milk is great and you can still use it. So you don't necessarily have to throw it away. And even if you do throw the milk away, it's kind of like to ease your mind, but it's not really changing the alcohol level in your breast milk. Um, just to ease my mind, after I drank, I would pump and try to get all that milk out of me and I would dump it, I would throw it out. This was because I was scared and I was nervous. And also because nights where you're intoxicated, the alcohol is staying in your bloodstream and it's staying in your breast milk. It's like a lot in you and sometimes some, sometimes people say like if you pump it out, you'll be a little less in inebriated because you're getting rid of some of it. I don't know. It's kind of like a thing. You do it if you want. I just did it to ease my conscience. Like I'm like, you never know though. The research is always, the research is always growing. Like what if they found out when you do throw it out, you're reducing the chance of alcohol still being in you. You know, like I was kind of thinking like that, like who knows, nobody knows. This is just study after study after study and we're still gaining new knowledge on this. So I was just like, no, I'm gonna wait the two hours and 50 minutes and then I'm gonna pump and dump that first milk I express. And then, and only then will I feed my baby, you know? So I'd have my freezer milk ready. I have my milk in the fridge ready for him and I'm over here pumping like just to be sure. So pump and dump is totally up to you just to keep us on track because I know this video is a lot. First tip is how long you should wait. Factor in your body weight when you do this. Second tip is having a milk stash ready. Third tip is pumping and dumping. Mm up to you whether you want to do that or not before your first feed with the baby next this is my favorite one guys so i was watching when i was in the youtube rabbit hole of pregnancy i was watching shay mitchell she's from pretty little liars um and she's also in you her pregnancy vlogs amazing in one of her vlogs she had mentioned the alcohol test breast milk alcohol testing strips and i was like what why nobody talking about this what? You can do at home drug test and see if your breast milk has alcohol in it. I got mine from Target. Like as soon as I watched the video, I went to Target. I was like, let me get these. Let me get, them. bring them, bring them to me. I got so many and it comes with little strips. I'll insert a picture. It's little, little strips with a color indicator. After you wait your two hours, like if you're really, really nervous still, and you don't want to dump your milk, you dip it in your milk, so let's pretend. You take your little strip, 
you dip it in your milk, you hold it for a few seconds, whatever the directions say, you take it out. The strip will change color if there is still alcohol in your breast milk, so you can be super sure that your baby is safe, your breast milk is healthy and pure. I will say though, if you have like a lot of orange juice, certain things will trigger the color to change. Better to be safe than sorry. That doesn't take away from its ability to tell you if you have alcohol in your breast milk. Like it still does its job. It just might sometimes be triggered by other things like a lot of orange juice or things that are acidic. So when you're doing the alcohol test of your breast milk, you want to make sure maybe you didn't have any orange juice around that time. Alcohol test strips came in handy for days that I had maybe two drinks or more than one drink. And I just was like, you know what, I don't even... Or if you had a shot or two, whatever kind of night you have, boo, I ain't judging you. But if you're having a night where you're really drinking, you're hammered, um, the alcohol test will come in handy because at that point, sis, you're going to have to wait like eight hours for the alcohol to leave your body. So now I'm going to walk you through a night out with the girls and how I personally would handle it to ensure that I'm giving my baby clean, fresh breast milk and I still had my night of fun the night before. So let's take a walk in imagination and hypothetical situation. So I get a text from my girls like, hey... Are you coming out Friday? Yes, I'm coming. I'm only having two glasses, boo, if that. So it ain't that, it ain't happening because I'm breastfeeding. So Thursday night when I'm breastfeeding, my child, let's say on this breast, I'll be pumping this one for, you know, about 25 minutes. The next feeding, I'm gonna switch, feed them on this side, pump on this side. Then I would store it in my storage bottle and I would put it in the fridge if I was using it that same week. If I'm just building a freezer stash and I want it for a long, long time, I'll put it in the freezer. But if I know I'm gonna use it on Friday night, like the same week, I'll keep it in the fridge. It's still fresh for a few days. But if you're like going out a month later, that milk is gonna expire, so you better put it in the freezer. So I continue to do that. This might cause your breasts to start leaking because your breasts are thinking, oh, a baby's sucking on this nipple too? We need to start producing more milk in this nipple. Usually she only feeds from this side for 30 minutes, but now both breasts are pumping milk for 30 minutes. So your breasts are going to think they need to make more milk. So you might start leaking and producing more milk now because you're pumping and you're triggering a letdown reflex more often than usual. So I would do that for every single feed I would pump the opposite breast. For some moms, you might be good with just doing it three times. So if your baby sleeps long while they're sleeping, that's time you can pump. You see? So now I have my bottles in the fridge. It's closer to Friday. I'm getting ready. Your baby's with the sitter, or maybe they're with their dad, or maybe they're with their mom. You want to make sure your milk is labeled with timestamps, the number of ounces. And you want to just be really clear with your saved milk, just so you know there isn't any confusion and, you know, reiterate to them that they cannot waste it. Then I would go out, have fun, drink, and I'll be watching. I'll be pacing myself. I would eat in between every drink. If you're drinking to the point where you're hungover, then alcohol is still in your system. So now you've, let's say you slept for six hours and you're just going to wake up and then pull a breast out and feed your kid. No, you hung over, boo. You still feel a little tipsy. The room's still spinning. You still got alcohol in you. I know I said wait two to three hours, but you got, you got too wasted. So now you gotta wait like 10 hours for it to leave your system, okay? And if this night is really, really crazy, the fact that you hung over, boo, you gotta do the alcohol test. Like, a lot of people don't. I don't wanna scare you into saying you must do this. A lot of people say, no girl, you're doing so much, just wait a little bit longer. You don't need to buy it. No, buy it. Because fact of the matter is, I keep saying that, but you are, putting yourself before your child when you drink and breastfeed. And this is not bad because we all owe ourselves a little treat. This is not bad. But in the same token, invest in this habit so your child is still healthy and your child is still safe. If you're going to put yourself first and have those drinks, put some money up and get the alcohol testing strips. They're so cheap and they're easy to get. Target is everywhere. Order on Amazon. Order at curbside pickup. Do what you gotta do. Buy it in bulk so you don't have to keep going out. It may be an inconvenience to you where you have to go out and buy something, but you're also inconveniencing your baby, right? So it's kind of like 
prioritize and ultimately you know what's best for you, you know what's best for your household, you know what's best for your habits and what's best for your baby. So your decision is going to be what works because we all have different scenarios and we all have different tolerance levels. We all have different situations completely. So what might work for me might not work for you, but this is how I would do it. I hope this video helped you and I hoped it pushed you towards breastfeeding. And if you can't handle breastfeeding because it is a big responsibility and it does take a toll on us mentally and physically, it's okay because the best option for your baby is to just make sure your baby is fed. A happy mom leaves a happy baby. If you do decide to breastfeed, I hope you take comfort in knowing that there's ways to do it safely. Thank you so much for watching this video. Spread the word. Save your notes in your phone. Screenshot the chart. Thumbs up this video and share it to your story um, so more new mommies can know like, oh, I can still breastfeed. Like this was their bottom line. Like if I can't, I'm not breastfeeding because I can't drink. Let them know, no, 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 you can there's ways and um, when you share this with your parents or older generations they might look down on you but just know that in your head like times change way more research is around now you're not hurting your baby if you follow the guidelines given so love you guys be sure to check out a mama's guide on instagram for more tips 